Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to go over upgrading the firmware on an Ender 6 3D printer. I recently did a series on resurrecting an Ender 6 that I purchased that was broken. You should go check that out, see all the fun we had with it. Anyway, I've started looking, you know, once I once it became operational, I wanted to find uh, some newer firmware because the firmware that was actually on the machine or that you get from Creality uh, is kind of lacking in a couple of ways. Um, notably, it does not have um, manual mesh and it does not have automatic PID tuning, uh, which are two things I really like to have. So I set out looking for alternatives to the Marlin firmware and you're really limited in what you can get because of the touch screen that's on it. Um, you can't just go and grab Marlin and build it. I tried that. Um, it didn't work very well flashing the generic Marlin uh, DGUS screen uh, firmware to the actual screen itself. Uh, some of the buttons didn't work, uh, no, most notably tools. But I, in that journey, I did find that there is someone out there in Sanity Automation who has done a fantastic job of retooling Creality's interface. And um, it's actually a modern version of Marlin. Uh, the back end's actually Marlin 2.1. Anyway, um, like I said, I want to give a big shout out to Insanity Automation because it's awesome. Love it love it and this is how you go about putting that version on your ender 6 so first thing that you're going to want to do is go to insanity automations marlin branch off github i have a link down in the uh, description it'll take you there and you need to go and grab a couple of things you're not going to have to compile marlin or do any of that for this um, like I said, they've done a great job as far as actually just providing you firmware. I mean, everything's pre-built. You don't have to do anything. <clears throat> but the first thing that you're going to want to do is go to the website, uh, the GitHub website that I'm on right now, and download a couple of things uh, to get set up. So the first thing we want to do is we need to scroll down to get the TM3D combined landscape file. You just download this and extract it. In that extraction, you'll see a Dwin set folder. This contains all the screens that you're gonna to need to flash to your um, touch screen. I'm not gonna get into how to flash it. Um, I'll put a link for um, Creality's tutorial on how to flash it. Um, it's relatively simple. There's just four screws you gotta take out to gain access to the card slot on the back of the screen. The other thing that you need to get is the actual firmware, which is in this hex folder. Scroll all the way down to the bottom, and then you'll find three files there, like firmware underscore ender six, and then the type of file they are all the way at the bottom. So this is the one I'll be using, the DW file. This is for plain stock Ender 6, doesn't have a probe on it. The other two files that are listed here is the BL Touch, and then there is a BL Touch connected to the Z minus. Um, again, I'm gonna be using the DW, but feel free to use the other two depending on your setup. Just grab this file, extract it, put it on your SD card, and then flash the printer after you've done the screen, and you should be up and running. So if everything worked correctly, you should be greeted with this new screen. This will let us know that the touch screen was flashed correctly and the printer itself was flashed correctly. Next, we're going to clear out all of our old settings. So we're gonna to go to settings, then tools and initialize EEPROM. This will clear out everything that we previously had stored and start us fresh 
with uh, our new firmware here. Next, we want to go to settings. Then we're going to go to leveling. And this is our new screen for our mesh setup. And the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to manually tram the bed. You always really want to start this way so that we know that our bed is flat. You know, everything is set up. Good to go. This is just like your old screen. You know, you need to follow the numbers basically and do it several times to make sure that everything is good. You know, start with, or I start with two, then three, then four, then five, then back to two, then three, then four, then five, so forth and so on. Do that several times till you're you don't have to touch the knobs at all. Okay. Now, once that's done, go to the measuring. And this is where we actually set up our manual bed mesh. If you got a probe, this is going to be a little bit different for you. Um, but again, I'm covering without a probe. We're going to say begin. And the print head will move to the far uh, or the closest left side. And just like you did with your um, manual tramming it's going to move the nozzle to its section and we're going to move the nozzle up and down well i guess in this case we'll be moving the bed up and down instead of turning the knobs you're actually moving the bed and you're going to do this until you get it just right you should feel a little bit of resistance not a whole lot but a little bit and then once you get that, you'll then say next. And you're going to continue doing this until you go through all 25 points that are here. And then once that's done, you will have created your bed mesh. So now you have your mesh created, you should see a screen that looks something similar to this that has all of the points for your mesh. Now you want to make sure that auto leveling says on. This means that you will use this mesh whenever you print something. You don't need to change your slicer, you don't need to do anything like that. The firmware is built in such a way that as long as you turn it on in here, it will stay on and it will be utilized no matter what. If you turn this off, it will stop being utilized. So moving on, we will go to settings, then we will go to tools and PID tuning. We're going to change the value for the bed to whatever you normally print with. I normally print with 50 and then we will say start. If you use a value other than 50, then change it to whatever you use the most. If you normally print at 60, then put 60 in there. If you normally print at 70, then put 70 in there. Your numbers will probably differ from mine um, just because you know, different hardware reacts different ways because you know, the environment it's in, whatever. Um, but I have sped this up. Like, it's going to take a little while for this to go through. Once it is done, hit store settings. And then we will move on to the nozzle. So save our settings. Now set your nozzle temperature to whatever you normally print with. I normally print at 200 and then start. Again, just like with the bed, if you print at a different temperature, put whatever you normally print with in here. You know, the one that you use the most is what you're gonna want to actually PID tune to. It's okay if you print something else that's 205 or 210. Every once in a while, you don't have to come back in here. But if you realize, hey, look, 200 is too cold for me, um, I'm going to start printing everything at 210, then come back in here and do another PID tune for that new temperature that you know, you're going to be printing with the most. That's the important bit here is whatever you use the most is what you want to PID tune to. And then again, my values are not going to be your values um, just because hardware is different. You know, environments are different. Once that is done, then you're once again, you're going to want to store settings. And then we can move on to the next thing. 
Now another added bonus for upgrading to this firmware is that it does support Octoprint so that you can see what you're printing when doing it remotely like you see on the screen right here. It's awesome. This, this firmware is really, they did a great job with it. So lastly, we need to print something that shows us how well our mesh is performing. And as you can see, um, my results are great. Uh, I'm super happy with how this is working at this point. It's way better than just tramming it. It's kind of tedious to go through all 25 points, but once you do, um, you know, you'll be happy with the results. The only thing that would be nice is if they had an edit mesh feature, but you know, I'm not going to, um, argue that fact much considering all the stuff that is in this again another great shout out to uh, insanity automation for the wonderful work on this um, it's fantastic and this is how the printer at least in my opinion should have come um, but anyway i hope you've enjoyed this i hope it provides you with some information on how to upgrade and happy printing and like and subscribe <laughs>